In the comments of the last few videos I've had, I've seen a couple of different people asking about how I make my playtest cards. Playtesting is a really important part of game design, so it seems like a pretty good question that I can answer reasonably quickly. There are three levels of playtest cards that I make, and it'll largely depend on how much I'm trying to impress someone. The first level, where I'm trying to impress absolutely no one, is text only. Open your word processor or spreadsheet program of choice, make a table, and type in your card text. I'll typically get somewhere between 4 cards across and 5 or 6 down per page, leading to a total of 20 to 24 cards per page. Print these out and then slide them in front of a sleeved deck you have from another card game of your choice. This is really fast, you don't have to worry about finding art, it's just pure game design. It's also really easy to write in minor revisions and pretty cheap as well. A lot of cards are going to fit onto a single sheet of paper and you're not using colored ink or anything fancy like that. This is great when you're still hammering out the rules and your card designs are probably going to be seeing a ton of changes. Once you have a decent selection of rules and sample cards to play with and you'd like to show the game off a little bit more broadly and get some opinions on it, it's a good idea to step up your game a little bit. This is not only so it looks pretty, but people are generally going to be more interested and take the game more seriously if it's got art in a proper frame and isn't just text. At this point you are still in the design process, so the art isn't going to be specifically for this game, it's just going to be whatever you can happen to find online on Pixiv or Google Images or whatnot that is going to seem like a good fit. This obviously isn't art that you can use to sell the game, but even Magic the Gathering used a bunch of scavenged art for its early playtests. There's a reason that TCGs all have pretty art and aren't just lines of text, and that's because visual appeal is actually important here. The other part of this is the card frame. Even if graphic design is not your passion, you still want some rudimentary text boxes or stat circles or the like here. It doesn't have to be fancy, but never underestimate just how far a gradient or basic texture or a bit of layering will go in making it look good. Once you have a frame and some art to go with your text, then you can put it all together in an image processor that can handle layers and transparency, i.e. not MS Paint. From there, just print them out and again, slide them into a sleeved deck from another game. If you don't have a ton of spare sleeved decks lying around, then just sleeve up some bulk commons and you can use those. For a fun fact, standard poker sized cards that are used by Magic the Gathering Pokemon and really most other TCGs is 2.5 by 3.5 inches or 63mm by 88mm for those of us out there that aren't foot loving degenerates. Pulling this all into a Word document works out to about 238 by 332 pixels per card, and you can reasonably fit 9 of those onto a single print sheet if you play around with the margins a bit. This is realistically going to do pretty well for you for most of the game design process, but if you really want to show off, then you can actually print out proper cards at a print shop. For most games, this likely isn't going to be a step worth taking until you've got some proper commissioned art to go with it and you're seriously thinking of selling it. But if you do want to print out your little game about dueling museums that literally only you and one other friend play, then honestly, go for it. Apart from the shipping, it is not that expensive. Here you'll be working with much larger image sizes. These printers will typically run at 300 dpi, or dots per inch, which translates to 750 by 1050 pixels. It's also worth noting that some of these printers will require you to add some additional bleed space. This is so that if a card isn't cut 100% perfectly to the image, there's not going to be an issue. This will differ between print shops, so just keep an eye out on what the print shop you're looking at is going to require. Typically for myself, I use print play games, which requires you to also lay out these cards on a 3x6 grid. Print shops will typically offer a range of card stock going from basic gloss all the way up to linen and even holographic. They'll be printed out in batches of 18 cards, with each batch typically running around $3 at its most basic option. You'll additionally get some discounts the more cards you print out at once. These options and print size is going to be pretty much identical to what you'll use when you're printing out your game to sell it later on, so these three printing options should cover your game from its very first playtest all the way through to its final printing and sale. Hopefully this was useful, and until next time, have a fantastic day.